Number two. And one. It's Sunday, May 10th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've been determined length. Episode number 553. Uh, I can speak, really, I can. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's, folks... Because it's, uh, uh, it's another one of these. Can we, get kinky tonight? we, of course, have one of our uh, kink spurts. Is that a good technical <laughs> term? Uh, uh, we got uh, uh, Cubsis, who has been here last hey month. He's back again. <sighs> hey. Hello. We're also recording the evening, so if you were wondering where the hell the show was today, we were recording until later. I was working, so... Yeah. Here we Next are. couple of months. It, this is like on a two month thing. If I understood the email correctly, it's quite possible we're basically switching between morning and evening every two months. I could be wrong on that. I'm a little confused. Be... No one's willing to try to clarify for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love my job. Yeah, but... I don't like the people I work with. <laughs> I don't like what? my leadership. What? A business? Let me just say like that. not being clear to its employees? Oh, Shock. like any <laughs> other, any other company I've worked for in the last 20 years <laughs> had been clear about things, communicated well, had reference documentation. This not one? So much so. No. I think it might just be this division of the company, this 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 oh, no. one project mm. That, mm. that that we're a vendor on, but Go fake. I don't know. Nope. <laughs> Fifteen years working in telecom, you would think that a telecommunications company would know how to communicate. No. No. <laughs> so just be prepared for misguided direction well and and especially considering my company forces us to change our our uh main portal password every single freaking month every 30 days makes sense yeah you don't really have to do that like my actual like i know we're on a complete tangent from what the actual topic is and i apologize (laughs) but i'm going on a rant here i as, as, as Dennis Miller used to say, I don't want to go on a rant here, but, but recently there have been studies and unfortunately I don't have any references, but I know they're out there that changing your password is good. How it is actually less effective to do it as frequently as a monthly basis. Because people then get confused by the the passwords, they get locked about out their passwords a lot more. Sure, that's a little more secure, but how many tickets are you getting to people having to get their passwords reset? Mm. It's and honestly, only because of one stupid thing that I did that I did, which doesn't involve really much of anything, have I ever had to change my actual. Uh, company password like the the password i use at the company i'm a vendor for okay my 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 password for youtube <laughs> everybody knows what i'm working for <laughs> or, or what project i'm working at that one i haven't had to change since i start but my company's portal every single freaking month and it's annoying the fuck out of me but that's that's me going on a rant. 
But that's just what I think. It could be wrong. Something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, let's talk Let about King. Quiet. Shall we? <laughs> mm -hmm. Welcome, Tony. How are otherwise you Otherwise, we'll go more on a tangent, won't we? <laughs> I was going to say, the security guy's going to stay quiet right now. <laughs> I was waiting. I yeah. was like, oh, there she go. I'm like, and the resident cake spurt is actually someone who works in IT professionally for my a problem, living, and they might have something to say about this. And keep in mind, my problem isn't the changing the password. It's the changing the password every single month. Understand. I just think the, the frequencies. Really the solution there. Yeah. And just, just recently, they, they we have an authenticator app. Oh, cool. So. Oh no! <laughs> now, of course. If you Here's the thing: is on, the authenticator app. On, the authenticator app. We don't have to use our password when we use the authentication code, so it's not even two FA. Anyway, gee. yeah. That's if nice. you want to get if you want to get on a nerve, talk to me about an authenticator app because I have to use it for the part time job, and it is annoying AF. Thank you, Microsoft. My work. You piece of shit. <laughs> Anyways. Want to log in your Microsoft, Microsoft account? Use our authenticator. Want to open something within Microsoft that you already authenticated? You have to use the authenticator again and again and again. Fucking yeah, bullshit. depending on the account that I have, I either have to use Google's authenticator, I have to use Microsoft's authenticator, or I have to use RSA's two-factor. And all three of them are used at my work. So... <laughs> and, yet, and yet I have more secure information that I have to access at my main job for the government... And I don't use an authenticator. <laughs> the fuck, people. Mm. Well, from my experience with governments, they're usually behind the times, anyways. Mm. Uh, well, there is no lie in that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sitting here, as I sit here and wait for unemployment to like the <laughs> like David, David's like David's like. It's a website, <laughs> which is mind blowing for government because you know they're still trying to hire website. COBOL programmers. Because, anyways, anyways, say, does anyways. the web run on COBOL? <laughs> <sighs> Did you so, know any so, of do any things with 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 HTML five? <laughs> So speaking of strapping things down and being secure. No. Oh! <laughs> Look at you. Drive the bus. <laughs> I mean. Back on track, bitches. Back on track. <laughs> let's, let's try to. Let's. Track. let's uh, okay. Okay. The, 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 I'm, I'm going to play the sounder again, but I'm not going to reshare the sound again. So. Actually, I was more of continuing it. Anyways. Um. Uh, we're talking about King again. This is, you know, we went last year, last month, we went on and on <laughs> and on about gear. Um, so we decided to split it. Uh, we're, this is, this is gear part two. Uh, and don't get me wrong, the on and on, not necessarily a bad thing. There's just a lot to talk about. Who knew that the shit that you buy to use and or wear would be such a big subject. Mm -hmm. Who knew? If you've ever been to a, a, a leather cake event and you go into the vendor market or vendor mall oh, yeah. and then you're just like, oh. Oh, yeah. Trust and believe. Like <laughs> This space is worth <laughs> so much money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, hide the credit cards. Me, Please tell me it is at least a multi-million dollar insurance policy on this square footage alone. <laughs> yeah. Hide your credit cards, hide your capitalist checks. Like <laughs> <laughs> walking into so well, okay. So, so we're talking about game. I'm gonna actually tell a story. So one so one of my first years at um I think it was Claw, I'm pretty sure. Um I literally told myself, I don't need a lot. <laughs> don't jump ahead <laughs> I don't need a lot I just want to like find something that I really would like that is I like unique things that's my person like that that's my thing um I wanted to find the one thing yeah oh no no what I'm hearing is I like 
custom. Uh, not necessarily that. <laughs> but I like I, I like to try shit on and I like to like because I want to make sure that it fits right and looks right. And sometimes if they're a nicer like a nice thing that is worth it to me, I will get it. But I also told myself stupidly, like, okay, and you're not gonna spend a lot of money. Yeah. Um I didn't that first year. I will admit that I did not spend as much as I could have because um, I literally walked in and I found a um, vendor and they had um, like leather shirts and and leather pants and I spent a good 40 plus minutes trying stuff on and happened to find a shirt and pants that fit kind of, but not 100%. And Lord, was I tempted. <laughs> but I was not, I was not ready to drop the coin for that because that was, that's some coin. Oh, yes. Yeah. But I was, it, it was, it was, a, it's one of those things where if it had been, honestly, if it had been the right color, this would have been a totally different conversation. Oh, it was gay. one of those ones where, yeah, I'm gay. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, like, wait a minute, her. you're gay? Yeah, welcome. Anyway, um, but no, I I literally put on this this that I was trying on leather shirts and they didn't have it in the color that I wanted, but they were like, here, try this one on in a different color. Holy fuck, it fit. And they're like, well, we can do, you know, we can do it in this color. Just gonna, you know, we're just gonna have to get it to you later. And I'm just like, oh, well, fuck, you know, I really want it, but mm. it's one of those like um, um, Veruca and Charlie and Chocolate Valley. I want it now, kind of moment. So, <laughs> yeah, but they've anyway. done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially so, full leather. Mm, like, God, going full cow is not cheap. No, it is not. <laughs> Just saying. Full cow. Oh my god. That yeah. reminds me of the first time I heard someone in leather say hi cow. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I'd never heard it before. And I was like, hi cow? I think Miss Tammy was the one that said it. And I was just like, oh hell no. And then I was so confused because I was like, wait, is this a 420 thing? Like. <laughs> no, it's not a 420 thing. No, I made the joke for me that it's a, a dual cow. I got it. Dual cow? Yeah, it took the cows to make it all. Because yeah. <laughs> he's big. big. <laughs> Don't roll your eyes, Gary. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> well, anyway... So again, very back to the yes to the to the back to the top of the hand. Yeah, the whole reason why we're here. Yeah, dearly <laughs> beloved, we are gathered here today to discuss the almighty cow and the gifts that it and latex and rubber give us. <laughs> um, so a month ago, we had Tony on, and he was adorable and knowledge as always. And we talked about gear, and we got a certain point. Uh, we talked about terminology. We talked about kinds, types, categories, common social acceptability, which was very interesting because uh, we were a month ago into uh, COVID nineteen pandemic and how things are appropriate in certain settings and some things not. <laughs> <laughs> well, and a good example of that is just the folks who decided to go dress up as nurses in protests. Mm. Oh, morons! Oh, <laughs> stay on topic. <laughs> mm. Well, I was trying to make it relevant. Sorry. Yes. No, it's it's appropriate. I, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we're going to get into some other stuff. Uh, so if you did not um, happen to catch COL 549, we suggest you pause now, go back, either watch it on YouTube or listen to the audio feed, and then you'll be caught up. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wait. Okay, welcome back. Yeah. Did you enjoy the show? We hope you did. We did it just for you. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
I don't think any of us have alcohol right now either. Just, just saying. No. <laughs> no, I, honestly. I, I have no, coffee I, and lemonade. That's all. I do. When was the last time I had any booze? Uh, Not last night. You'll have to, you'll no, have to fix I, that later. <laughs> anyways, uh, so, Tony, let's talk about um, the first thing, which is uh, owning slash using um, people when they become aware of gear when it comes to leather and kink. Uh, as you as we were just joking about kind of like if you go to an event and you see the vendor area, especially if you go to a big event, like if you go to IML, uh, AM, or MAL, um, CLAW, these different, you know, probably Folsom, like you go to these big events and you like go into a vendor area or multiple vendor areas, it could be a little overwhelming. Like mm-hmm. not only the plethora of vendors, but the product lines, the different things that you can have between toys and apparel, um, you know, uh, and and the categories go on and on. So uh, I find it interesting. <laughs> the first thing you say is the hardest part is figuring out your intent, which I was like, oh, I thought the hardest part was being able to afford everything. But <laughs> I, I that, that's always a question, no matter what you're doing. <laughs> Fair. Well, true. Very true. But heaven forbid you head into a vendor market that has various leather, for example, uh, shops there. And especially ones that will do custom, and you can get very expensive very, very fast. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Says the guy who has two full, uh, actually now at this point, three full uh, leather uniforms. So. Bravo. Nice. I have uh, <laughs> color selection was chosen by my sir for one of them, so I chose the next one. And then I had before that had gotten pieces together of a third mm. there we go so now you've got enough to get you sort of through a weekend uh, easily yeah especially yeah. since they, I can actually mix and match because they're all related colors yeah nice <laughs> um, so what what is it about intent that you wanted us to know well it, it's for some, so for example, like we're even talking about leather uniforms. Uh, mm-hmm. Some folks, they have this uh, mystique towards it, um, and are, are you getting it to show off? Like, hey, I'm fully dressed in leather because this reminds me of the 1980s bands, and mm-hmm. I think it's cool. Or are you doing it because you have a formal event that you're going to, or you're joining a leather club, or something like that or are you a contestant in a leather event and therefore you wanted to look your best mm-hmm. are you interested in the tom of finland sort of look which yes. apparently his 100th was recently mm-hmm. uh, two or three days ago actually yeah yeah as mm-hmm. i say just in the past week yeah, yeah, you got to where you could google who tom of finland was but um and there's a great documentary actually a couple i think out there so and and we had an entire episode about Tom of Finland as well. That we did. I forgot which one that was. Um, so, yeah, like, I mean, your point is take it, you know, like, what is your, I guess what you're saying is, like, what do you expect to get out of said gear? Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of it is, a, so for example, the example I gave of myself with my different uniforms. Uh, one of them was specific so that it matched what my sir wanted. Um, and then I got my own, which was for me. So it was something that I could wear when I'm not around him. And it was just that that sort of formality for me. Um, but having said that, for, for uh, 20 years, 18 years in the community, I didn't have anything beyond a bar vest. So yeah, you don't necessarily have to go out and have a full cow. No. <laughs> well, and it, and it's interesting because this isn't really gear, but I realized when I was in college, I bought a, a leather biker jacket. Mm-hmm. I had coveted and wanted one for years. Um, there was a for me, it was a masculinity virility kind of like machismo like aspect thing to it that I had like no <clears throat> recognition of it other than like I just like I wanted one and I thought it was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so I bought that like back in about 94, 
95 maybe and i still have it to this day and it's funny because um i never really thought about leather or kink or whatever but then through the bear community i learned about leather and stuff and i was kind of like oh i own a piece of leather not that that's justifiable like in mm-hmm. comparison to like you know wearing a uniform or whatever but to me it was it was one of these things that i started recognizing and paying attention to like oh there's something to this mm-hmm. there's something about the the look and the aesthetic of apparel um when it comes to i think uh the kink and leather community it has so many layers of meaning for individuals that can it could be very little or it could be quite a bit. And I think that's kind of what you're speaking about, Tony, is like, what is your intent? Like, what are you expecting to get out of this? Like, it could mm-hmm. be meta. Like, it could be something that, like, means something to you, like, even on a psychological level. Or it could just be purely, you know, um, it gets your hormones mm-hmm. you know, flowing. Mm-hmm. And even beyond that, of, of let's step away from the leather side and just mm-hmm. into, like, back into the sports gear. Of Are you getting it for Halloween? Are you getting it for going to the bar? Are you getting it? For going to uh, bear events, party. dance, Don't, yeah, yeah a party, uh, yeah. or are you getting it because there's a meaning there? Like you mm-hmm. really are into wrestling, and therefore you want to tell people that this is your thing. Yeah, they each are different, yeah. and the what you get will probably vary based on what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get into like top uniforms, for example. If you're doing Halloween, you don't care that it's perfect you just want it to look kind of vaguely right Mm -hmm. but if you're joining and going to a leather event and you want to be in full uniform you may actually need to get into the nitty-gritty of making sure that you have the correct patches and you have placement of things properly etc right um i can go a little bit kind of further into it and talk about things about like um fantasy role play um, Jim, my partner, has taught classes on this at Claw, and I've been his assistant, so I know um, a little bit more about it. Uh, but like to kind of get into fantasy roleplay aspect of things, it kind of helps you get into the scene, you know, mm-hmm. doctor, patient, you know, those kind of things, coach and and um, player, those kind of kind of aspects of it. It the gear can help enhance the moment. To kind of keep it, take it out of the, here we are in a bedroom, like, you know, and we're pretending like we're a cop and robber or whatever, or I've got a, a mask on and you're wearing your, um, you know, night clothes, or we're doing the, co- the coach thing and you're in like full, like, football regalia and the coach has the, you know, the short shorts and the, the, the short shorts and the polo shirt and the whistle and the clipboard and the hat and maybe some sunglasses and it kind of really kind of gives it that um more realistic aura. feel yeah and that aura yeah it helps get you into the groove as it were exactly and on that like what you were mentioning as well gary of each person has something different that they'll get out of it so if you're doing it for role play that is one entirely different thing than if you're looking at it to be macho mm-hmm. or if you're looking at it to be uh, respectful. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's where like the formal leather is more respect. It's not necessarily a playful thing, Yeah, but it can play on that masculinity concept as well. Um, it, it varies depending on the uniform uh, and, mm-hmm. and what your intent is, again, of will determine what you get. And well, and like, I think what's interesting is that, you know, you made a notation about is like, um, that this may not be your thing. Like it may not be something specifically that you get out of it, but those that you are interacting with, or especially like in a role play that you're having, you know, a scene with or something of that sort, like it's more for them. Um, I think that's common in, uh, I guess I want to say like non kink uh relationships where one person is willing to do something in the event of role play for the sake of like the other person like i think of how um for lack of a better reference like i think of the tropes of you know within heterosexual relationships about like the french maid 
or the naughty nurse or the mm-hmm. doctor and scrubs like mm-hmm. um you know that they're they're kind of trope in a way but there is a thing for it and i think you know that in some relationships you know a partner is willing to do something for the sake of quote-unquote performance but in reality like it means nothing to them like it doesn't trip the yeah. you know their switch in, in a certain direction yeah and, yep. and be open to those opportunities would be the other thing i would say is just mm-hmm. don't uh, i have had had a friend who had no interest in football gear he was big into hockey gear problem is, is there's nothing in my size for hockey <laughs> just <laughs> aside from a goalie jersey that's about the only thing that would ever fit me so uh, he was open to trying out football gear, and now it's about 50-50 for him. So mm. <laughs> it, it's, it's adapted with the scenes. Yeah, and um, I mean, and, and one of the things to be aware of is like that you know, uh, interest in gear can change over time. Um, you know that you may find yourself drawn to something. You know when you're say in your twenties, and then you know with life and maturity, you may find that like it's not that it doesn't mean anything to you anymore, but you may move on to something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and even like if in my case of like when you gain weight, suddenly you might go from that baseball interest to football, <laughs> and then it comes back to other topics. <laughs> It will vary on your own as to what your interests mm-hmm. are. And yeah. it will also change about who you're around. If you're around yeah. folks who are into police uniforms, you're probably going to pick it up eventually. Mm. That's a good thought. You know, That's who you associate with. Yeah. What about so your translation? Friends? Yeah. Translation. Go to CLAW. Go to IML. You will get leather. <laughs> <laughs> Gary knows nothing about that. Well, okay. So, yeah, for the record, um, I am glad that I am older <laughs> in my life when I went and started going to events because I was dangerous and dumb with credit when I was younger. So if ah, I had gone to those preach. events, I would have been worse off. Like, instead yeah. of spending thousands of dollars on, like, midnight Denny runs during college, I probably <laughs> would have bought a shit ton of stuff that, like, yeah. Um, yeah, still I probably would have had a bad credit score out of it. <laughs> yeah. Like I, and, uh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying it's, it, 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 I kind of get that same feeling like, you know, not the same age kind of, but it does. I grew up in a family where credit was the big, like, holy shit. Like you have to be really careful about it. Cause don't make the mistakes I did kind of situation. So I've always held off, uh, on being that credit person. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Um. So it has always been like you can go to events and you can go to things, but realize like you have this much money, and there's a difference between you know spending a whole bunch on stuff and you know not paying rent. So you kind of have to be really, really careful on that. You know. Well, and that brings up something interesting. I'd like to know your thoughts, Tony, on like price versus quality um the reason i say that is because i think people get like they get shell-shocked or get really shy about gear when they see price usually with brand new items um and i find from my outside perspective that everything is always brand new like rarely do i see things that are gently used or reconditioned you know what i mean like and i could be wrong about that maybe like there is a whole um part of you know the the community that is into that um you know like repurposing or i know that sometimes usually when it comes to um individuals who are older and then they pass on that usually within i want to say within kink or leather families there's like this legacy piece kind of idea that like you know things are carried on to those that need them or you know, are to be uh, bestowed them. Yeah. So uh, it depends on the area that you're in as well. So like Mm -hmm. if you're talking about sports gear, most of the time you're not going to find stuff cheaply as far as like used Mm -hmm. because it's either been torn up to shreds or (laughs) it's crap that you probably are going to wear once and it's going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Um, So there you can hit things like eBay. You can hit things like the local Goodwills things like that to find them. It's just hard to find them. Yeah. Okay. There's no easy way to get them. 
um, when it comes to leather, uh, uh, there is a, a, depending on who is involved, uh, there can be a gifting process. Mm -hmm. So you can gift leather to someone that's coming in or someone that's meaningful to you or someone that has done something for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can gift them off a piece of leather that you, for example, aren't using anymore and pass it on. Um, and you can do that with other uniforms as well. I've gifted police uniform type stuff in the past. Um, I've given, I'll, I'll freely give away to friends the uh, sports gear stuff because I find it super cheap and I'll buy a ton of it because I know that I can give it away. Mm. But that's because I'm one of the people that I hunt down sales and as soon as I see them, I'll jump on it, even if I mm -hmm. other people that I know can't do it at that time. Mm. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, now, one thing I would caution is, is uh, there's also a lot of assumption that you have to have gear to participate in something. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, a good example of that is, is I've heard quite a bit in like the puppy community. Mm -hmm. of, I, I can't afford to get a hood, so I'm going to get the cheap one off of Amazon. And <laughs> then the complaint is, is that, oh, it tore apart immediately. Mm hmm. If you save yeah. up and can get one from a different vendor, one that you can actually get support from, you'll probably like it more. But if you yeah. just want to get one to experience it, then sure, the cheaper yeah. one will be fine. But you'll get more use long term out of the quality yeah. one. But at the same and time, you don't need either. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, this has been a big, big, like, issue within the pup community. And I'm, I'm assuming mostly the pup community, other pet types of communities I'm not sure about, but especially in the pup community, it has become a big deal. There have been um, contests where they request that you have gear, and that's where kind of the conflict is lying, is where, like, well, you don't necessarily need the gear to be a pup. You can just be a pup. Um, the gear can, like we've talked about before, can help and can benefit and can enhance, but it's not necessary and there are, there has been a drive to kind of push that concept out of people's minds that you need the Mr. S, um, you know, neoprene hood with all the bells and whistles in order to do like pup. You need all the things. The re main gear, I will say this as someone who is experienced in, in, in the pup community, the only things you need to necessarily worry about in regards to gear in general are safety things where if you are going to be in a mosh and you're going to be on the ground in a position that the human body is not <laughs> normally in for longer periods of time you need things to protect your hands and your knees mm. you know knee pads um either mitts or something along those lines and those real that's really the only recommendations, but if you're never going to be on the floor and moshing or doing a lot of lines, then you don't necessarily need those either. Just be yourself and enjoy what you have and, you know, be around the pups that you know, and you'll kind of get that experience without having to necessarily go get all the things, you know. Um, I personally have a few hoods, and I got the cheap one from um wish <laughs> and um it is and you can see you can tell that it is very cheaply made it's not gonna last like i know this for a fact it is not gonna last but i got it because i wanted to have something to where if it gets damaged if it gets broken i don't feel so bad about having to maybe replace it are are you know um you know deal with the loss of like the potential hundreds of dollars that i spent on it so it, it it is a big deal it can be a big deal but it doesn't have to be well and i think one of the things that that maybe doesn't get discussed much at least to my knowledge in the leather and kink communities is the psychological like pressure people feel under to be accepted instead of being mm -hmm. othered so, like, I've seen it firsthand in the pup community how difficult it is to be a part of the community and to go to a mosh and to not have gear. 
because it seems like everybody has it when mm-hmm. in fact maybe two thirds or three quarters do, but like mm-hmm. it's so overwhelming. You feel like yeah. you're just surrounded in a, uh-huh. in a sea of people who have hoods or tails and, mm-hmm. you know, mitts and like, you know, um, I mean, it kind of reminds me of the early days of the bear community. You know, it's like, yeah, you were part of the bear community, but if you didn't have like 501s or, you know, Wranglers and some shit kickers and, wow. And a flannel shirt with the sleeves cut off or torn off. Like, like <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was the look. It was the mm-hmm. uniform. If you didn't have that, you kind of felt outside. And, mm-hmm. I mean, if, if there were if there were any A-gays, fuck them. Like, yeah. if, like, if anybody ever makes you feel that you're other because you don't have gear, screw that noise. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it is very psychologically difficult yeah. to be amongst a group of people and to feel like, well, I don't really, you know have I've, any of whatever it is yeah i have often only because i have like i've gotten over the time over time i have like a few masks and i will bring one or two with me because i'm like hey if someone needs or wants a mask or hood i keep calling it mask hood excuse me pardon me it's it's late um <laughs> If anyone needs a hood or if they if they want like the knee pads, then here, like you can you can borrow these and and go have fun. Because to me, the 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 cost of these things should not inhibit you from enjoying the experience or the go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say in two parts to that. One is so like I'm another one of those that I take multiple hoods with me on trips. But part of that is because of size. I'm I have a size eight head, and so I had to have custom hoods made. So I have my older ones that I still bring with me in case somebody needs one at an okay. event. Um, so if you do feel like you need it to to fit mm-hmm. in, talk to your friends. I mean, your friends aren't going to say they're not going to make fun of you because you don't have it. Mm-hmm. But one of them might have a spare one around that here right. use it for the night. Um, but also that ties into why gifting exists. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of times if you were part of a leather family, for example, and you didn't have leather gloves, for example, the family would pull together and either buy a pair or f- hand one down from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So it was a way to keep that within the community and keep it special and meaningful is the other mm-hmm. part. Yeah. Is if you receive a, a gift, whether it's a uniform, pup hood, it can even be a pair of handcuffs. Uh, it, it has meaning to it, and so therefore it's important to you, and therefore has a, a kind of a history upon itself. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Those of us who have, you know, gone through the the wonderful gifts of gaining weight and such, sometimes it's nice to hold on to certain things because you never know when you might be able to give that to someone. Um, I have held on to things. Um, for a while, because I, there's not not in the vain hope that I'll be able to fit into it again, but in the belief that it might be beneficial to have, for someone else to have. So I'll have to find a link, by the way, because uh, last year at uh, uh, the Boot Black competition for IML, um, one contestant went up on stage, was not in full formals, and actually discussed the fact that he did not have full formals on. And the whole entire speech was, you don't need this to be part of the community. Mm. And yeah, didn't win, unfortunately. He should have. Right. But uh, as, as my understanding is, got a standing ovation for it. Well, I was just going to say, Tony, like, how did that go over in the room at the Excellent. time? And see, that's something I find interesting. This is a little bit of a tangent. Like in the in the leather kink community, especially in leather, I find that there's been this, and I want to call it a, a surgence, but I don't know. Like there seems to be a a recognition of people making moments where they say, "You do not need fill in the blank. Like you do not need gear. You do not need to be told. Like you do not have to serve. Like I mean X Y Z. Like whatever it is to be." included to be accepted to be you know considered part of um and i find it very interesting because like people tend to applaud 
like the bravery and like the the sheer like ballsiness of like calling out and saying like mm-hmm. this has been an expectation for a long time i am here to say that that does not apply to me and i think others agree with me and then like they kind of get that agreement and yet like you s- sort of just said tony as an example it's not like it's groundbreaking but it's not that like mm-hmm. it doesn't go quite that far and i'm I, it's not a judgment i just find it curious that there's this thing happening that people are saying you know you don't have to have these things and yet that doesn't seem to be fully the case at least in terms of like giving people titles you know in terms of like them uh being a person that the community looks up to i guess yeah or a representation in in this particular case um the the gentleman i was speaking of um i actually had conversations with him afterwards and it that part was not what lost him the title um, hmm. there are other things well and in in part of it was just confusion uh there there was difficulties with the the contest as far as like how things were arranged and, mm-hmm. what? and there's always yeah i know there's I've always never issues <laughs> yeah. who's so, ever heard not... of a contest having drama and problems and just <laughs> Improprieties and confusion. Never, never. Yeah. <laughs> David with the same fans. I'm I telling you, we need, was... we need, we need tea. We need tea for truth, fans. Like, because <laughs> some of this is not shade. Some of this is truth. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think it was drama filled. It sounded more like it was uh, uh, minor mistakes that just became a larger issue. Building. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, but I mean and and but we had discussed about doing the full leather uniform and whether he'd be going up on stage with it or without it. And ultimately you have to choose what's in your heart and mm-hmm. he did. And Yeah. I'll have to try and find that speech because it was actually very awesome. Yeah. Right. It's one of those things that you it it takes I I, I will put it like the it probably took a lot of guts to do that in this stage and platform that he was on. And I would commend him like thoroughly for, for that, because that is, I mean, every, if you know, IML, if you know, like the whole like mental picture, if you think of it, you have a specific mental picture of what that means. And for someone to go on without all leather, and explain why they're doing it. It was it was a it was a it was a it was a gutsy move, and I think it was a, a an appropriate move, um, especially in this day and age where, you know, these things can get expensive. We've talked about it several times, and I know we keep going back to like expense and stuff, but I think it's important to realize this: gear isn't always cheap. And it is not always able to be found cheaply. You might be lucky and well, get that sale as you were talking about, um, you know, um, Tony on like, you might be able to find all that sports gear on sale because you're keeping track of everything and you know where to look kind of thing. You might get lucky. I'm you know, kind of saying that, but like the same the, on the opposite end, you can walk into a vendor market and are looking at all these things and the shock is there as gary mentioned you know certain things can be relatively eh, expensive and then like holy shit like this is 700 fucking dollars for maybe a custom built shirt kind of thing like you 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 that's the way it is sometimes and you never know unfortunately but you have to think about it i ha- i when i whenever i go to leather events and i like think about things like this i go through the process of what it is like a basic black leather shirt you could probably find relatively inexpensive but you want to add color, you want to make it custom, you want to you know put it for yourself. 
if you are a larger person or if you're a shorter person or you're a smaller person where it's not in the general size range of things, it's there. Those are things that are going to add to the cost. Um, it's Even hours. Of, yeah. It's hours of man work. Um, you know, work hours, labor, putting those things together. Um, the fact that the people have to lug it, you know, you know, this isn't like, Oh, let me just fold it up in a little square and just like throw it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a box. This is, that's usually not the case. Some things are, like big and massive and you have to be careful you know that takes time to get out there so all those factors go into play and all those factors affect the cost and it it will it is something to consider Mm -hmm. you know as well but you know as we've been kind of mentioning off and on like it sometimes you don't necessarily need it it can help but it's not always a necessity well, I mean, I think there's a couple of things like the intent thing is, is really important. I think for folks to understand, it's like, what, are, what is the purpose? Why are you, why do you feel that you need it and you want to obtain it and then where to go from there? Like, and I see this often across like the realm of a couple different communities. Like sometimes Halloween really is the gateway, like holiday of, of into things because people buy stuff. So like they may go to party city or, you know, uh, what is it, Spooktacular or spirit stores or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, around the holiday season, around Halloween. And like, so they get, you know, a costume. Um, and I'm sure, Tony, you know, because you have, you know, your um, sports uniform stuff. I'm sure you've seen some pretty crappy quality, you know, sports get up stuff because people are just, you know, it's 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 cheap for a reason it's cheaply made it's not meant to last it's like you know kind of serving a single purpose um so there's an expectation with that uh but it could also be the beginning of something um because like some things that i think folks kind of forget about especially when it comes to apparel is that you can have it customized so like you could take something and you can have it adjusted for you, but you have to know how to go about doing that mm-hmm. and and who can do those type of things so that, you know, it looks um, more to you than just off the rack. Mm-hmm. Quote, unquote. And and just like, like, like this, especially if you're talking sport here. Sazzle.com slash Cubs out loud. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Bing! No, especially if you're talking like sports gear. There, there's a perfect example of mm-hmm. you can go and have your name put on it. Mm-hmm. Give yourself you can actually a get a jersey, yeah, um, and and that is, is entirely possible. The cheap stuff that you're going to get at Halloween, probably not. Right. Um, in the in the leather world, for example, uh, the other thing that is a factor is the type of leather. So there's mm-hmm. biker leather, which is usually the thicker kind because it's meant for safety, but then you can get to much more supple leather that uh for example the reason why i have that first uniform was because it is amazingly soft and i absolutely love how it feels Mm -hmm. yeah and uh, i have my vest has a totally different feel than any other vest that i've ever had uh it but i also it was kind of one of those things of i'm all vendor market Ooh, this is nice this is nice oh that (laughs) Yeah, and immediately everything else gets canceled out. Mm-hmm. But you can't always afford to do that, so you may have to start at something that isn't quite what you want, and then work right. your way up. Right. Yeah, um, it's tougher when you do things like uh, vests, especially if you start getting patches put on them, because migrating patches is never easy. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, that would be the one time where I would say, if you have the chance, splurge on something that you think you're going to keep for a while, don't buy the cheapest one you can find. Yeah. Um, But if you're going to get, just get a vest to wear, then by all means, get what you can afford Mm -hmm. and work your way up. Um, And that's where, if you do get a new one, now gift the old one. Right. To someone you know. And, um, and I think we've kind of said this, but I just want to say it outright. Like, don't be intimidated by what already exists out there, especially the customized stuff. Like, yes, there are some, gorgeous pieces of, of you know gear that exist that are like like time sucks you know so much craftsmanship so much work goes into it and they are beautiful and they are worth 
the value, you know, that is being put on them, but do not get intimidated and be like, you know, that thinking like that's the goal, like that's the thing you have to go for. Mm -hmm. Like you do you boo, like what, what Mm -hmm. speaks to you specifically is what you should go for. And the reason I say this, because it could be a little dangerous because I know enough title holders like in different realms that I saw a lot of them like, oh, well, I'm getting a custom vest or I'm getting you know, blah, 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 like the sash, mm-hmm. da, 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 like all this stuff. And that's great. But if that's like on a frequency kind of thing, like that can become intimidating or you could start thinking like, oh, well, I have to have my thing. Which mm-hmm. is not, you know, yes, you should have like something that means something to you, but like, you know, be aware of the fact that, you know, individuals that are doing some of that stuff – it may be because of their responsibility to title and representation, not just for the sake of owning said item, which is which and, is different. And, and another thing is, is, again, talk to people who are interested in that. So in the case of sports gear, if you're interested in getting into it, talk to people who are already into it because they can help you out. They may actually have spares. Um, when you get into leather, uh, a good one is, and I miss it here in St. Louis, is we don't have a leather shop really anymore that does custom leather. Mm-hmm. But when we did, I knew the owner, or one of the owners, and I would regularly go in and chat with him, and he actually made some custom stuff that only recently has started to be appearing in like Mr. S and such. And that was 16 plus years ago that I had mm. the stuff made. But he saw it at the time as a challenge. Here, I want to do something that nobody else has done. And he dug into it. Um, So sometimes it's it's a fun thing for those other people. So don't be intimidated like you can't ask somebody, hey, what's your thought on this? Mm -hmm. Right. Especially when you're talking to people who are craftsmen craftswomen like craft individuals who you know have skills they 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 do appreciate being challenged if you can present that to them like i've seen some leather companies actually take that on you know like someone comes forward and is like hey i'm a huge fill in the blank genre fan i would love to have something that like blends this with kink can you make me x um (laughs) you know and then the next thing you know you're like oh I didn't real that realize that horsetail butt plugs could be made in the houses of Harry Potter, but now they're here. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I was trying to pick something that doesn't exist, and I think I failed. But um, <laughs> quite probably um, available in the store next year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, I get what you mean. And, and you know, as we've kind of, you know, we've, you know, I've, we've said several times that that is going to be, I like that idea of like maybe finding someone and maybe challenging them because that would be kind of cool. Um, oh, wow. Because there are things I've thought about because I have, ooh, sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to stop talking. Oh, Damon's <laughs> wheels are turning now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And the other part is, is if you start doing custom leather in particular, it can get very expensive very fast. So it's one of those things of think about it before you rush in and go have them make something because mm-hmm. you don't waste their time or your time. Well, that brings up a good point, Tony. So let's yeah. talk about owning and usage. Um, because I think like sometimes people get caught up in the, the um, got to have, got to have. Like, especially if you go to an event and there's vendors around and you're whatever, and you're just like, woo, shiny. Like, you know, and you're like, I've always wanted to, you know, uh, you know, armbands or wristbands or I mean, you name it. It could be anything. It could just be simply a belt or a pair of boots. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it could be a rubber latex, you know, tank top. I mean, it's like the, there's so many different things that are out there that you could really be into. Heck, it could be a jock strap, by golly. Um and, you know, you could kind of get swept up in the whole like, oh, like, you know, and then you find yourself and then you buy things and you may not regret the buying. But then there's this whole other thing like now you own it. And what are you going to do with it? Um, you know, but, you know, what is there about care, uh, storage, usage, um, cleaning, <laughs> um, like I didn't know when I bought my leather biker jacket about leather conditioner was never on my radar like no offense sears did not tell me about such things and they did not try to upsell me at that time when i bought it back in the 90s like nowadays i would fully expect that to be like oh girl well 
you're going to buy this jacket. You're going to need some conditioner and you're going to need, you know, blah, 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 and some cleanser and, blah, blah, you know, and all this kind of shit. Um, so, like, now maybe a different different time uh, regarding that. But I think it's important that people realize, like, now that you have something, especially if you're going to put some coin into it, like, that isn't to say that, like, you wouldn't do that with, with items that don't cost very much, but I think most of us when we spend more for something we tend to not only take more ownership and responsibility of it but we want to take better care of it because um you know if you if you bought a 4k television girl you're probably not going to want to throw shit at it that's the way it <laughs> and, and there's also a feeling of if it gets destroyed if you spent more on it you you are more devastated yeah typically because it did cost more right um, now, one thing to keep in mind for any gear that you get is it will fall apart eventually. You can you can take care of it, that leather jacket, you can take care of it perfectly for years, and it could get stolen two weeks from now. Yeah. You mm-hmm. you don't have control of that, so you don't you shouldn't obsess about it. Mm-hmm. But right. there are things you can do to kind of be mindful of it. And part of it is is what is the material, for example. So if we go to like wrestling singlets. If you're getting a, a Lycra singlet, don't throw it in with your blue jeans because the zippers are going to scratch the hell out of it and you're basically going to destroy it. So put it in a washing cycle of, uh, that's going to be very gentle and mm-hmm. you'll be able to keep it around for a lot longer. Um, uh, and with that being said, like any um, Lycra spandexy type material, believe it or not, Um, there's already things that exist on the market that can help you that you may not have thought of. And it didn't occur to me until like you, like something kind of randomly connects for you. Women have for years and years now been using like a netting type of sachet, like in their wash to put their, no offense, their bras and panties into um, to keep them from getting twisted up and mangled in the wash with other items. I mean, yes, technically you could probably use like a wool light in a hand sink if you really like are going to be that careful about something. Yeah. Or like you said, Tony, like you could put it in with some gentle stuff, um, you know, but you could actually use some other items uh, to help you with that, you know, and and put it in together, you know, but yet yeah, it'll still be washed in or protected in a way. I actually have a few of those bags, but I don't use them for wash. <laughs> I use them for my cigars. Um, <laughs> okay. Because it, it allows air to move in and out, so the humidity comes in and out, and I can put them in a container with everything else, and everything keeps separated. So, <laughs> totally different function, but yes. Um, Fair yeah, enough. And, and I actually have some of those dedicated for clothing. Obviously, you don't want to use one that had been for cigars and clothing. Uh <laughs> So, True. but I do have some stuff that I would put in that way. Um, the right. difference is, is like when you're talking full uniforms, uh, those usually aren't big enough. Um, you can find dry cleaning. So if you get like the dry cleaning kits mm-hmm. to do at home, uh, usually they come with a similar bag, uh, usually a drawstring, and those will work just as well. Uh, mm. And likewise, it, it, other common sense things like don't put a bright red jersey in with your whites. Uh, yeah. Make sure you understand no, no. washing instructions for all your gear. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, it, and be aware of what the material like is and how it should be treated. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like every most individuals know that cotton will shrink. Um, you know, other fabrics are more forgiving, but other fabrics do not deal well with, say, heat. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have to be air dried or, you know, on a low cycle. Um, yep. you know, there's just, there's things that you need to take care of. And Tony, I like in your notes, you were like, uh, but a fireman's attire, yeah, whole different realm. Yeah. Like throw it in police uniforms. Yeah. They're, they're usually meant to be bulk washed and they just throw detergent in and who knows what the cycle is. We don't care. Uh, <laughs> they're durable. Um, Right. I mean, they're made to last. Like, they're meant to, not to be in, not, they're not meant to be indestructible, but they can take a beating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, th- I think that's like a key thing is to realize what the materials are, what it's made out of, and then adjust accordingly as you go from there. Yeah. And if you get into things like rubber, um, I am not a rubber aficionado, so I can't speak 
to the best mm-hmm. way to clean those. But there is a whole separate process for cleaning. There's mm-hmm. a whole pr- process for shining it, yep. uh, especially if you like the real super glossy look. Mm-hmm. Um, and I for that, that, it's oh, go ahead. Well, I know I just I, I I have friends who are into rubber and those kind of things, and they they there is a definitely a different process. There, are, um, you're not putting those in the washer and dryer. Obviously, you know those don't. You're going to probably. I know for a fact that certain people, some people just like they individually wash each item separately and then hang it dry so that it, you know, dries fully because um, since it's rubber there, you have to be careful what you use on it as well because it can dry out the rubber and cause it to break and crack. Well, and you also don't want it to get stretched if you put Mm -hmm. it in somewhere where it might Mm -hmm. yank in the direction. Um, But also, sorry, thank you for mentioning that. Um, especially if you have things that are customized. So if you've gotten patches put onto a police uh, shirt, for example, you may want to be extra careful with it and not just throw it in because you don't want to rip all of those right off. Mm -hmm. Um, If uh, in the case of leather, you, you can do your own conditioning if you're dedicated to it, but it may actually be easier to take it to a boot block, for example, that that is what they love to do. Yeah. And especially, heaven forbid, you have soft leather. Um, most of them will be near orgasm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I really enjoy the, the leather. Like uh, It's true, yeah. though. I really enjoy the leather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I never knew until I met boot blacks and then saw them doing what they do. Um, you know, and it's kind of a misnomer because they don't just do boots. Um you know, they really, most of them are into it. Like, they take it very seriously. Um, it is, in some ways, I don't want to say a fetish, but it is, you know, something that they put a lot of time and effort and love into. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for some of them, it is triggering, like, in a positive way to the lady, um, you know, that they that they really enjoy it. Uh and, and I mean, I think that's true of a lot of things that you own. Like if, if there's a, if there's an individual that are individuals that have expertise in said thing, especially when it comes to the care, the maintenance, um, cleaning, all that kind of stuff, like, please consider that and, you know, and do so. Like I was hearing you say that Tony and I was just like, oh man, my jacket hasn't been touched in a really long time. And then I was <laughs> like, oh, but I know some boot blacks. I could probably mm-hmm. send it to them and be like, could you do me a favor when you have time and just, <laughs> You know, clean her up and conditioner, and, please. Yeah, and just, you know, you know, respect your boot blacks, keepsters, leather folks. Like, definitely respect them because, you know, they make our stuff look really good. And they don't always get the love and respect that they deserve. Tip your boot black. Yes, for sure. And another thing I would say is if you're, if you're going to a boot black and asking them to work on a piece, give them a story about the piece. Mm. A lot of, a lot of times that actually will make it more enjoyable for them. So if, if I take the boots that my, uh, uh, sir that had passed away, he gave me, they will treat them super nice versus if I just take it to them and don't give them any of the backstory of it. Yeah. Because there is this sort of, and depending on the boot black, they will talk about the energy of mm-hmm. uh, a, an article of what, how it makes them feel and how importance mm-hmm. uh, affects it. Right. And they're actually good, really great at answering questions about things you could potentially do at home. Yeah. You know, well, that's because they're passionate about it. They love Oh yeah. It. Yeah. Right. They're not going to keep you from learning about it because they want you to enjoy that passion as well. And that's, true with all the uniform stuff if you talk to someone that's into football uniforms they're passionate they'll tell Mm -hmm. you all about it they're not going to not tell you because they want you to come to them all the time (laughs) Mm -hmm. right um and you know it's not just like the the cleaning aspect there's also a lot to be said in terms of like storage Storage, um i think when you're new to to gear you probably don't think much about it like oh i got this piece of gear whatever but you may not realize like that there's better ways to take care of it, better ways to store it um, in terms of like what kind of a, a, a storing 
I, I want to say box, but you know what I mean? Like what materials are used um, to store said item, like whether or not you hang it or if you lay it down, whether or not you fold it, um, you know, thinking mm-hmm. about like if it's going to get creases, um, that kind of stuff, especially if it's something that you don't use often. Mm-hmm. Um you know, like I'm thinking, Tony, about like how you said to like you have three uniforms. Granted, there are 52 weekends in a year. I imagine you're not wearing them, you know, with with great frequency. <laughs> so, Especially lately. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. With canceled events being being the trend, um, you know, then that you have to kind of think about, you know, what you're going to do with um, those particular items to make sure that they, you know have the care that they need while they're not being utilized. I was looking around here because I actually had something that would be perfect for that conversation. And I don't see it here now, but, um, okay. <laughs> uh, the, the, the worst one I've ever seen is puppy hoods. Um, because they're neoprene, if they get mm-hmm. folded, they have this horrible crease that will oh. take weeks for it to come out. Um, Uh-oh. and, David's apparently got one. He's it's show and tell kids. So for those of you that are just listening, I apologize. You won't be able to see like the. <laughs> what well, about forward, to, like, I may have an answer. Uh, no, not in here at the moment. But for example, for the puppy hoods, um, I hopped on Amazon and bought a wig holder. Oh, okay. It cost uh, I got three of them. I think it was six bucks for three of them. And it is basically it's portable. I put it in my bag when I travel and it literally is perfect to put the hood on so that it stays open all the time and doesn't get the creases. So, yeah, right. so this is a perfect example. So this is the like one I got from Wish. This is the very cheaply made one for those that are watching. Um, and as you can see, there's this huge ass crease in it that's like all the way in the back um here and the reason it is in there is because it actually when i got it from wish it actually came like this fold it up right fold it like this flat so this crease is more than likely never coming out because it would probably you know it came from wish so it came from china so it's probably it was probably sitting in this way for weeks and since i do not wear it that often it it's it's there so right. so how are you storing it i guess would be the first question. um well i actually store these not so much this one but i store my other ones on um um the foam mannequin heads okay mm-hmm. that's similar yeah um so, yeah yeah Tony was just talking about like using wig stands, like ah, and I have yep, I have one, I have those too. And what's wow. nice is they come in flat, mm-hmm. and so you can put these in a bag or whatever if you're traveling. Uh, these are super glued, so they won't come apart because there's <laughs> nothing worse than chasing down this stupid ring that comes falling off. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it, that's an example of finding a cheap solution to Mm -hmm. a problem that affects everybody um but if you're it could just be any neoprene it doesn't necessarily have to be this oh yeah rubber is another one if you're into rubber you probably are not folding your stuff Mm -hmm. you're probably hanging it um leather for the most part you don't want to fold usually pants you can kind of get away because most of the time those will as you're wearing them will lose some of the creases yeah um but your your vest, um, typically you don't want to fold it, especially yeah. if you've got patches on it. Yep. Um, sports I'd gear, eh, fold it all you want. <laughs> yeah. It's usually, yeah. It, it's made to be shoved in a drawer and yeah, stored for six months. I mean, right. so yeah, that's one of the things. Like I will admit that that's why I like this one is meant to be my like go out really quickly and cheaply and get something and do like do the things because I can just like. Because I already know it's not going to get much better, I can just shove it, and then when I'm ready, it'll be available to put on. My other ones, I do if I am already at an event, it will go in a bag, um, and then almost you know, hopefully within five ten minutes, be taken out and put on. Um, there are ways to clean these 
hoods with like soap and water, you know, um, you can do it in the shower and it actually, you can actually wear it in the shower, um, to help get some of the creases out because it's steam will help loosen some of those neoprene creases. <clears throat> And that actually brings up something I would recommend too, by the way, since we had talked earlier about lending uh, pieces of gear, mm -hmm. when you return it, wash it first. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Unless they want it unclean. <laughs> yes. Unless otherwise requested. Yes. Well, and usually you want to ask the person who gave it to you, like, hey, do you want me to clean this before I give it back to you? Because they may clean it themselves. I'm one of those people that I clean everything that I lend out. Uh, whether it goes in the wash or whether I'm like a hood, I'm washing it in the sink. Uh, yeah. I tend to do that just because if I don't do it now, I don't know the next person that's going to borrow it if mm -hmm. that other person actually did it. Mm. So rather than assume, I would rather take that extra step and make it happen. Yeah. Right. But I appreciate the people that take the ask. extra effort mm -hmm. to actually ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So be mindful of that if you do borrow somebody's gear, clothes, any of it. Be polite. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a big thing about whether what the condition is that they want it returned in. Some, I imagine some people would be like, don't worry about it, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. Because like they have a personal pride of like whatever the item is that they're lending out. So they'd rather do the, you know, the caretaking themselves. That's fine too. You know, I, I, you just need to have that conversation, I think. Yeah, and, and like heaven forbid uh, you borrow something from a boot black, they will not want you to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> because they have a particular way they want to clean it and you mm -hmm. might actually make it worse. Mm -hmm. So they will tell you if you mention, hey, I can clean this, you'll probably get a no, I'll do it myself. Speaking of, uh, in your notes here, you kind of talk about like, you know, humidity for uh, being a thing to be aware of when it comes to some stuff. Some items are relatively easy to clean. Um, or you may want them to be in a certain uh, state of, I don't want to say disrepair, but a certain state of usage. Um, you know, like if you have like a sports uniform, you may want it to have some like some grass stains or rips or. Right. You know, like like maybe you want the knees to be really worn for some reason. Uh, you know, like there's <laughs> there's an aspect of things that you want um, when it comes to leather. If you do an oops um, and you you clean it incorrectly or, you know, uh, expose it to some elements or some, you know, things. Uh, that's why boot blacks are really helpful to have them in as friends, um, you know, preferably besties. So you can <laughs> eat humble pie and, and, you know, give them everything in the world that they want to fix your problem because you, you know, made a yeah. boo boo and, you know, perhaps, you traveled with them and you were not expecting when you got to your end destination that your hair conditioner or hair gel exploded over the inside of your luggage and now you have goop all over your boots or something. How come this um, sounds a bottle like of lube exploded and fell off the bed or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> What's that, Jeff? How come this sounds like it's in a personal experience? Oh no, not a personal experience. I have I have very good friends that are bootlex and I have heard them tell of tales of like People have come to them, you know, almost in tears, like, is this salvageable for the love of everything? Like, can, can you please help me out of my moment? Yeah. Um, and especially if you're going to, like, a title competition, I, that would be devastating to show up and be like, what do you mean my arrow silicon lube just, like, is all over, you know, my oh, fill no. in the blank or something? Oh, um, no. You know, because actually... bootlex in a way are kind of chemists. Like they have to understand the principles of like, what did you do? Because like, if Tony, I'm just picking on you, Tony. If you turn in a shirt and are like, could you please get the mustard stain out of my shirt? Like they they can understand the organics of it and be like, okay, well, mustard is a principle of blah 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 blah. So this is the cleaner that I would use, you know. And then, as opposed to you know something that is much more difficult, like. Um, you know, a penetrating oil or grease or something, you know, that then you have to probably do other stuff with. Like that's – those are the things I've learned of being around boot blacks that like really make me like revere them so much because I'm like they, – they have to know some serious shit. Like – and if they don't know it, then they have a, their own community that they will reach out to and be like, all right, kids, like I got this. <laughs> like what do we do about that? Like – well. And with the boot blacks, some, a lot of times they don't have everything themselves. 
Mm-hmm. So like all of the different uh, uh, cleaners and polishers and all of that, they may have certain limited amounts. So they may be able to do something. But if it's like, for example, if it's a white leather shirt that has a stain on it, they may not have something to clean that. Mm-hmm. But I can guarantee you they know at least one person who does. Mm-hmm. So they may not be able to fix it immediately, but eventually they will. It's a now, um, I know a guy a sort of situation. Yeah, exactly. And and yeah. I've been surprised by the like household unexpected utility aspect of some things that you just wouldn't imagine um, make a great cleaner, a great solvent, a great like um, grease remover, uh, you know, whatever the, the case may be. Um, you know, and it's kind of interesting because I'm thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, it kind of is like a hints from Halloween's aspect of things. Like, you know, what do I do about X? I didn't even think about that, Tony, until you were like, you know, what if you had a white shirt, you know, or a, like a white leather tie and it got something on it? I'd be like, <gasps> like, I would probably like want to die. Um, yeah. And that's where you get into talented root blocks. We'll, we'll know, hey, I need to use this, this and this. Mm-hmm. And ones who are new probably won't have that answer, but they'll be able to get someone who can teach them. Right. And so they'll take it as a chance for them to develop their skills as well. Um, But sometimes your gear will get destroyed. It's a factor of actually using it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm one of those people that I don't personally care if it gets destroyed because if it got destroyed for a good purpose, I could care less. Like I can't tell you the number of baseball and football uniforms that have gotten destroyed intentionally. (laughs) Right. And then, I mean, you bring up a good point about, um, talking about safety uh in the items that you have uh and what could or could not happen to them i guess um in terms of that so like tell us a little bit more about because since this is uh more your area about sports um like uniforms or pieces so like uh, uh, give me an example of well like you're talking like i know that you're really into football is like are there anything in particular that you should be aware of in terms of like um like your own personal safety versus the safety of others when it comes to items that you have like if it's um like here's here's something that i never quite thought of i'll be honest with you and this is true across the board but um leather boots rarely ever do well on a linoleum surface with any type of lubricant I don't care what it is if it's a bodily fluid actual lube a spilled alcoholic drink (laughs) <laughs> don't matter what it is you suddenly f- find yourself competing in the winter olympics of ice capades like not a fun time no that's based yeah. on reality <laughs> <laughs> well you always have to be aware of what you're for yourself what you're wearing so in the case of like a football uniform if i'm wearing cleats uh i probably don't want to go step on somebody's hardwood floor <laughs> Bad idea. that whole yeah, that would be very, very bad. Um, and and I have actually stepped through a floor before in cleats oh. at the request of somebody to, to... Yeah, they didn't want me to do that, but they knew that there would be a risk. Um, and... Uh, uh, wait. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm... Oh. I'm my mind, <laughs> I'm thinking of a... I'm, I'm trying to... Okay, I, I, there's a story there, I'm sure. And I have to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, pictures were being taken let's just leave it at that <laughs> okay <laughs> um so uh but likewise if i wear a football uniform out to the bar um and i have shoulder pads on it's very easy for me to turn and like knock five people over <laughs> and as I'm a short person i would appreciate you not doing that just for the record <laughs> that's why usually if i go to a bar i carry the the shoulder pads <laughs> nice but yeah, any of the, uh, if you go in, in full leather, for example, you probably want to be careful as well. So. Yeah. Like, be aware of your surroundings. You know, if you're, like you said, going to, if you're going out to a bar, you know, that doesn't necessarily have like a coat check or a clothing check or what have you, like what you're wearing, we talked about this, I think, in the last show, what you're wearing is what you're wearing, like mm-hmm. the whole night, you know? So if you go to, a um event wearing a the football gear and what have you um yeah like people are everywhere the bar is packed 
like you need to be aware of what all you have going on. You know, yeah. as someone who, if you wear hoods and, and what have you, for me, when I'm wearing certain hoods, I can't wear my glasses because um, they don't always fit under the, the hood. So I have to be a little bit more cautious when I'm moving because I can't really see shit. And, so, And puppy hoods are a good example of you usually don't have ear holes. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for you to hear someone else. Mm-hmm. But on top of it, you've got the, the nose, the muzzle or whatever you want to call it, that mm-hmm. nobody else can understand you. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So it becomes well, a... It brings up an interesting point because we're going through that right now, right? In the pandemic that pretty much everybody should be yes. wearing masks and they're all different kinds. Like they could be, you know, a bandana. It could be, um, you know, an actual surgical mask. It could be an N95. I mean, like I've seen everything and anything out there. I was shopping with my dad today and both of us like we're talking. It was like, what? What? Like, <laughs> like you know, it's kind of a, a an old comedy routine, but it was, like, you know, if you're not facing each other directly and looking at each other, like, or being close enough, you kind of can't hear, mm-hmm. um, you know, what the other person is saying. Yeah. Um, you know, and you have to be aware of, like, the safety of communication. Like, if you're a sub, let's say, or a boy, um, and you're being led somewhere and you may, you know, have a hood on. Um, that is blocking your sight and your sense of smell and hearing. And like, so you have to not only have trust in that situation, but also, you know, an awareness to some level. And, um, like even with pups, like this is, uh, I'm going to try to not get upset about this. Like one of my pet peeves that has happened to friends of mine is that they're out and it's a pup night or whatever. And people invade personal space and make presumptions and do shit that they're not supposed to do. Just because somebody has a tail does not mean that you get to play with it or touch it. Yep. Like there's a reason why we have a series of shirts about consent. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like if I we have a puppy you, one, we sports. have a leather one, we have a trans one, we have a bear one. Do I need oh, to I add know. more? Ca- do we need to add oh. more categories? <laughs> Well, I think of like Tony, like, you know, if he's in a sports uniform, as hot as it may be to see him in lycra pants with a jock strap on underneath, that does not give me permission to just like start grab assing or shoving my hand down his like his pants. At least not without his permission or his sir's permission, depending on the circumstance. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I don't know that there would be a chance that he would say no, but okay. Uh, (laughs) Fair. Um, the uh, another one is, is kilts. I mean, mm. every oh, person yeah. that's ever worn a kilt before has had somebody walk up and reach under it or flip it up. Mm-hmm. And it very <laughs> so, ask the the dumbass question. Oh, are you wearing it regimental or whatever? So, okay. So fun story because it's story time. Um, I was at an event um, that my leather group was putting on, and it was a kilt night, and. Um, we were, I was, at, I was there at the event and I walked up to uh, friends that I knew, well, a friend that I knew and their friend. And I walked up to them and both of them were wearing kilts. And I, I, I did ask first and I did the stupid, like, are you regimental thing? And can I check? And they were like, nope. And I was like, okay. And I've come to find out um, one of the friends was actually trans and it would not have been a good idea to just go mm. up under the kilt and just like go reaching around. Cause that's not, that's not fun. No. <laughs> and as someone who is, um, who can generally be okay with it in certain situations, but if I'm around like people I trust and people I know, I can have a little fun with it. But if I'm at an event and I don't know hardly anyone and I'm wearing a kilt, like right. I still want you to ask. I don't want well, you to just go down and peeking right. at all the other things. Yeah, and and also you have to put into a, a consideration of of realistic on yourself. Like I, I've worn a kilt before where somebody has immediately grabbed my ass and run a finger up the crack, and it's like, yeah, I can imagine there'd be a day that that probably wouldn't go well. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Bish, you don't know I had tacos yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> just saying, so it's like just one of those. For your own safety, you might want to reconsider that. 
Well, yeah. I mean, and safety is a thing. Like, I remember once I wore my kilt and I had, you know, boxer briefs on underneath. And someone kind of gave me a little shit for it because they did not have my consent. And they, like, lifted up my kilt or something. or And they were like, why are you wearing underwear? And I was so pissed. And I was like, because I have fat thighs and they rub. <laughs> like, it's a comfort livid. thing. Come on. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I, I mean, it was like, hello. Fat boys do not like chafing, period. Like, so deal with it. Well, and that used to be a very a leather bar thing of if you went to the bar and you didn't have on a jock strap or didn't have nothing on, they would literally harass you for it. Now, mm. that has changed over time, but yeah, that's how it was when I first started going out. Mm-hmm. And it's, and I, it's, I, it's, no, and it's true. Like, so again, like consent is the thing. Like, while we're talking about safety, there's also your safety as well and your personal, you know, space. You know, if you don't want to be touched, you don't need to be touched. Like, just point blank, like, period. No matter what you're wearing, no matter what gear you have on, you know, if you are enjoying what I'm wearing, then you can compliment and you can talk to me about it. Like, I would love to talk, like Tony was saying, I would love to talk to you about exactly what I'm wearing and maybe a story behind where I got it or like what it means to me and why I'm wearing it. But it does not give you a, a, you know, free pass to just go about touching things. I can be in nothing but like a jock and some socks and sneakers still no touch. Right. Like I think that what people sometimes misconstrue is they think that like you're, your attire, the way you present mm-hmm. yourself, gives permission to sexualize you, mm-hmm. like to you know, uh, to you know, have this like open titillation or whatever. And it's like, no, that's not necessarily the case. Like, I may be wearing this like for the first time to see if I have like enough sense of empowerment, like, and how that goes. And you, ding dong, could be the one that ruins it for me because you objectify me instead of supporting me, like in my moment, because you don't know jack shit about me. You don't know how I've struggled in my life, like with my, you know, personal well being. So be aware that people, everyone's on a journey, kids. Like everyone's doing their own thing. So it's not that you can't approach them, it's not that you can't compliment them, but there's a big difference between complimenting them and offending them mm-hmm. or out- outright, like, like harassing them. Mm-hmm. And on the same lines, they may have a sir, they may have a handler, they may have mm-hmm. somebody else that they may not approve of it, mm-hmm. and, but they were the ones who said, I want you to wear this. Mm-hmm. So that person may not have, uh, may not be their first choice. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you know, and and one when thing people... I... go ahead. I was going to say one of the thing on that was a safety, um, mm-hmm. something to always purchase is safety gear. So if, for example, you're into bondage, make sure you have safety scissors, mm-hmm. you know, cut rope. If you're going to get into handcuffs, make sure you have a spare key. Keep it on a mm-hmm. key ring. Always have safety first. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, cons- consider and think of that. Like, what is the space I'm going into? What is the environment going to be like? Who's going to be around? And like, and believe it or not, kids, weather is a factor. So like, I don't know how many times I have people seen people so scantily clad in the midst of mother nature's frozen snowstorm right like (laughs) come from the heavens like it's six to eight inches outside and they are like oh my god i'm freezing my ass off no shit bitch you're wearing chaps and a jock strap duh like and don't assume that because you're in the car chocolate starfish is so puckered at this moment (laughs) girl and don't assume that just because you drove there that you're going to be able to go back because your car may break down and now you get to try and explain to random person who decides to try and help you while you're standing around in a jock and chaps uh, mm-hmm. true like take something i have else with you yeah my one of the i love like I, I will admit i love events especially when i can stay in a hotel that um the event is going on in because it makes it a lot easier if say um I need a break or something breaks or I'm cold as fuck and I need to get something warmer or um, I'm really not feeling this moment. I need to step away mm-hmm. kind of things where I can take step out and be quickly 
move to where I need to get something um, because it's it's easy, it's easier. It's great. Now, that's not always going to happen. You know, we talked about big events like Claw and IML. The hotels, host hotels sometimes sell out very quickly and you may not be able to get into that hotel. So you have, like you said, you have to consider that a factor, mm-hmm. um, you know, and while it's not the greatest thing to like maybe lug around a backpack full of accessories or other clothing, it may help in the long runs, you know, um, one of the things like, you know, just for as an example, we were talking about kilts earlier. Um, when Jim and I go to a bar event, like we have a bar about an hour away. If we're going to wear our kilts, we will usually wear underwear and in the car as we're making our way to the event. Does the underwear come off when we get to the bar? Probably. But the whole <laughs> purpose of it is to like, you don't know what's going to happen. You might be driving along and all of a sudden you get a flat tire and that's not going to be fun like going outside in a kilt and it's windy or whatever and like wind is blowing up and you're flashing the interstate you know are you to to get practical you might be hungry on your way home and you might want to stop somewhere you know i don't know if i want to sit my bare butt on the Waffle House, you know, <laughs> like, I don't think I want to Girl, sit my ass on I the know. House. I was just thinking about it. And I was like, ooh, them yeah. banquettes and them stools at a Waffle House. Mm. Mm-hmm. Probably exactly. not the best surface. Just saying. So, like, you know, believe it or not, it's just, it's, it, I know it seems, it's practical. It's all practical, you know. Right. I mean, like, you know, one of the things that Tony had in your notes is like, you know, like the reason I brought up environment and the weather is because like the practicality of it, like, like think ahead. It's like, oh, I'm going out for bar night. It's a leather event, blah, 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 blah. But there's like a rainstorm coming. Like probably the last thing you want to do is get caught in a monsoon Mm -hmm. with leather. So like think ahead about how you want to handle that. And like you said, David, like if there is a coat check, that's probably a perfect opportunity to take advantage of that. It'd be like, okay, I'm going to take some practical clothes, you know, jeans, shirt, jacket, whatever, because when you go to leave, it may be last call. It may be closing time and it is pouring outside. Mm -hmm. And I personally would be like, okay, let me change my clothes. And then put these things in the bag I brought so I can temporarily get them safely to mm-hmm. my vehicle or wherever I need to go. Yep. Um, is it a pain? Absolutely. Like, you know, to to have multiple things to be aware of um, and to consider, you know, like yeah. the summer is a huge thing. Like I used to think for many years that leather was a winter sportsmanship kind of thing because <laughs> it keeps you warm and the last thing people want to do is wear you know leather in the summer or rubber latex like i've seen way too many drag queens melt in the sun at prides in my lifetime i can't imagine you know not taking that stuff into consideration mm-hmm. as well yeah. um, and, and related to that uh, if you you have to keep your attire in mind too if you have a harness that's made out of chains you're probably not going to wear <gasps> it in winter Oh, well, I was thinking the other way. I was thinking about wearing it in the hot summer sun. <laughs> well, okay, too. I mean, you okay. have to be mindful. It's probably not necessarily the best thing. <laughs> well, I was just thinking some people are into branding, but that, that's a different <laughs> show. <laughs> now, that's a different show. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's another yeah, show. so, I mean, just your personal safety is a key factor. Like, your gear has um, limitations, uh, it, what it can do, and also, like, you don't want it to be your downfall. Like, you don't want it to, you know, cause issues for you. Um, that's like, you had mentioned, Tony, I hadn't thought about that, like, the safety scissors thing. Like, yeah, like, in the event that you need to be, you need to quickly stop or get out of, like, whatever, like, you should have a a, a plan, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, that, that and that goes for any gear. I mean, if you're mm-hmm. into football gear, you need to be aware of how do I get the – football pads off fast enough if i need to yeah um yeah like if you're yeah depending on the play or what you're doing you might need to someone may need to get out of them so they can breathe a little better and like you said earlier with the puppy gear that always do the safety gear first if you're going to do a mosh yeah worry about the hood last yeah honestly 
Like you can, I okay. So fun. Like I remember one of the first times I went to a mosh. I had there was a guy that went there, and he had like just like like go to like a costume shop, and you get like the little puppy ears on like a headband, and he put those on, and he had like I think he said he made them. He made these like fur um, like pet like mitts or gloves, and he was a fucking puppy. Now he had, he did have um, knee pads on. Thank God for that. But like, he was just like, that was his thing. And perfect. Perfect example. It was what he wanted. And he, he, he said he made those. And I was like, they're really cute. And they look really good. It was very much like a, if you looked at him this way, palms up, he had like the, the pads. Mm -hmm. So kind of cute. Yeah. It was adorable. (laughs) So, and, 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 Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. That's that was it. I was gonna say, and, and even if you're like, for example, those would be really cool, but I couldn't wear them because of my size. Mm-hmm. So when I do puppy, it's boxing gloves, like full mm-hmm. on with pads and everything, because yeah. it gives stabilization, it gives support for the wrist. Mm-hmm. And there's and they're cheap. Yeah, <laughs> those are those things that you can buy for twenty bucks on Amazon. You don't have to mm-hmm. buy the Mister S hundred dollar oh. ones. I ha- I use I have gotten um like um MMA like yeah, training exactly. club, like mitts that's what I use as my mitts um, they have the wrist support and they have like the padding on the knuckles that I need and I use um I think soccer uh, knee pads because they have ones on the sides on them as well and it's just that's what that's it so yeah gear safety is also important. Especially with things like that, especially like puppy, and I think even you know um, other types of play, there could be there's safety that could be t- should be put into um, a factor. Well, and even if you get into like if somebody is collared, it's a good idea for that person to have a key, even if they're not necessarily going to always be Use taking it, it off. Mm-hmm. But in an emergency. Having that key is very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, likewise, if somebody's wearing chastity, <laughs> keep the key on you. Mm. I have warned people, truth. and they still go and forget to take the key with them. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's always mm. fun to get that message. Like, oops, it half fell off. What do I do? <laughs> take it <laughs> off. Uh, I, I don't have the key. Oh, good luck. No. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yep. Well, there's much more, I think, for us to discuss. So uh, we're going to end up doing a part three. Ha <laughs> ha. Big surprise. Um, we'll talk more later about like um, things to consider when it comes to purchasing uh, and getting your inventory together, so to speak, of your stuff. Uh, so tune in for that. We will do that again in the future. But um so today was, you know, learning about storage, cleaning, safety, you know, owning, uh, usage, trade, or gifting. So lots of good stuff today. Uh, mm-hmm. More to come later in that mm-hmm. case. Uh, before we move on to wrapping up the show, is there anything else, Tony, you had thoughts about you wanted to get out there for folks? Hide the credit card when you go to leather events. <laughs> listen to you. Truth. So much truth. Budget. Not even kidding. Budget. He is not kidding, like at all. You're you will walk into an event like that, and your eyes will open, and you will just be like, <sighs> like it is. It is. It is the literal kid at a candy store. Ask ask and, the vendors when you go to the vendor mart. Do you have a website that I can order from? <laughs> and then and, and window don't shop. Do the mistake. Yeah, and then don't do the mistake I did last year, which is take all of your cards and then have your wallet get stolen. So. <laughs> Oh, and see, I was going to make a, a, well, I'll still make the joke, but like, uh, I'm like, you know, when you walk into the vendor space, you could probably hear your credit report start to weep. Um, <laughs> just, just be aware, uh, you know, like we were saying, you do not have to buy everything. You do not have to like go for the gusto out the, uh, out the gate. Um, I do see some people that kind of feel like, you know, like I'm going to buy my first piece like 
you know what I mean? And they get like all really um, excited about it. And like, and my thing is like, take your time. No Mm -hmm. one but you is putting the pressure on you for the Mm -hmm. thing to obtain. Like, to be honest, like the, the leather jacket that I bought, I wanted it so badly and I started looking and then I was like, oh, I didn't realize there were designs and styles. Like I had a thing in my head. It was a classic James Dean traditional, quote unquote, traditional kind of style of biker jacket. I didn't realize they came in different cuts, like in design. <laughs> it just wasn't on my radar. So I was like, oh, now I got it. So luckily I caught that quickly and I was like, OK, I'm going to take a little time, like do some research, uh, mm-hmm. you know, kind of. Um, what did we call those things back in the day where you like, what is it? Dream board or whatever, like where you put the pictures on and like, you know, it's <laughs> kind of like, you know, and, and figure some stuff out. So I didn't feel like I went and focused on it. Like the, the boots that I bought this last time about what, three years ago at claw, like I knew exactly what design style I wanted. Um, but because I'm a shorter guy and I have smaller feet, I knew I probably wasn't going to be able to easily find them. And so uh, Brandon, actually, from the Cleveland area, um, who's volunteered with Claw, he was like, yeah, come on. Like He's like, we'll walk around and stuff. And he's like, I know exactly who you need to go to. And I was like, sweet. And so we <laughs> met this you know, vendor that does nothing but you know footwear. And he's like, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And if you'd come here on Thursday, I could have sold them to you on the spot. He's like, because I bought one pair. And the guys from like California or like on the West Coast, he's like, but they are long gone. He's like, so if you want them, I can order them and you'll get them in about X amount of time. And I was like, that's OK. It, it's pretty much the Sunday of Claw. Like, I wouldn't expect you to have them mm-hmm. here and now. So I waited until I really felt that I wanted to get them. And I knew going into it, it's like, OK, this is about how much I think I'm going to pay. Um, you know, I was pleasantly surprised. And then they arrived and it was kind of like, you know, Christmas in what may or june whenever they got here like like, my boots are here and now i don't have anything to wear them for but that's okay (laughs) i'm gonna embarrass myself here just to to let you laugh um but you were talking about your first leather jacket um my first leather jacket was a members only jacket oh that is not a surprise to me at all we are we are children of a generation for those of you that are younger that do not know this the letterman's jacket there were these things called malls They were uh, buildings that you went into, which had lots of different like stores within them, and you could travel around. If you see anything vintage from the 80s or the 90s, that's what those things are that you see people in. Um, Members Only was a very infamous chain, and you could go in and – or Wilson Leather Goods was another one. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you could buy yourself some something at the time. Yeah, my parents bought it for me because I had been hanging out at the leather bar. They had no idea what that meant. But it was a leather jacket that they could get me for Christmas. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold the phone. Do you mean to tell me your parents bought you your first piece of leather? No, it wasn't the first piece of leather. It was the first okay. leather jacket. Okay. I yeah. had a bar vest at the point. My my and <laughs> other things. I I my first piece of leather was a uh, peanuts leather jacket. <laughs> I like that. In fact, I think I found a picture of it. Nice. That's nice. I think yeah. we need it for next time. <laughs> well, oh, not, not necessarily There's me home. wearing it, but a picture of the leather jacket. Oh, That works. Uh, but I can't seem to pull it up. For just, <laughs> just I, know, I know somewhere, I don't know where, there is a vintage picture of me in, in my jacket from probably right after college days oh i'm gonna have to go digging to find that somewhere i'll I'll bring mine for the next it's down in the basement so i will bring it up for the next show (laughs) nice everyone's gonna have a little show and tell retro thing for next time (laughs) all right yeah it's not coming up anyways that's the end oh by the way, just contact us pop over to our website comes out loud.com shoot us an email it comes out loud at gmail.com uh, leave us a voicemail, sex or otherwise, your questions regarding gear. I don't know. Uh, at 361 Talk. that's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on various social media outlets on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, on YouTube, at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our Entourage chat where you get notifications. We are going live and various other things. 
at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col to get right into the group. Uh, you can also uh, subscribe to our Google Calendar when we plan to actually post or uh, record these shows at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can get merchandise like the hat that Gary is wearing and nothing else that any of us uh, are wearing. <laughs> The only Don't. piece of merchandise on here is that hat. That's okay. Uh, I but, wanted to wear an appropriate shirt. But but we have a we have a bunch of different things. Uh, and uh, sure. if you if you follow our resident uh, sex therapist, you can see you on Facebook. You would see a picture of him wearing a COL shirt, but it has special customization on the back, which you can mm. do yourself. However, that specific version of customization was very special, but you can do something similar. <laughs> um, that's all on Zezzle uh, slash Cubs Out Loud. I didn't say .com because it's .com, .co .uk, .com .au, blah, 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 blah. Enter your con country localization for .com in the appropriate place of the URL. Uh, you can also, from anywhere in the world, uh, become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud uh, for as little as buck a month. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many shows we do. You only have whatever amount you subscribe for. It's a per month thing, not per show. Um, especially when we're doing Drag Race episodes and there's a lot more. <laughs> um, that's all, patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. If you just want to send, send us some money paypal.me slash cubs out loud uh is a great great place to do that it goes directly to us one time thing no no subscription required you can rate us on itunes subscribe to us at google play podcast and spotify you can find me anywhere in the internet it's box set box cup puppy box cup box something or other if you wish to get in touch with me you can find me as theater cup 79 on most bear related sites or as pup underscore umbra on twitter and if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. Uh, on Twitter, if you want to see like the stuff that I follow that used to be the old Tumblr, you would add three X's to the end of that. And Tony, if they would like to get in touch with you, what would they find you on? What's your handle, basically? Uh, Cubs is C-U-B-Z-I-Z, -Z, and that's pretty much anywhere I'm on. <laughs> Including FetLife? Uh, yeah, probably, although I need to log in. Uh, it's been like a year. Uh, <laughs> so maybe not. Some... I think it is actually, if I'm remembering. Yeah, correctly. it is. It, it, I'll have to log in because it's been a while. Uh, but yes. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, with that, I mean, it is this thing so that people can tell. Now, uh, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good show.